back clean. Um, I think it's cool. As long as we win the game. So, I'm pretty bad. JT, what, what kind of group have you seen out of your offensive line this year? Coach Meyer said that they're maybe the most improved group on the team. Obviously, you're going to need them against this aggressive defense. Just what have you seen out of those guys? Um, I think just, um, I don't know, you see strain. I'm pretty sure he said something like that, like strain, the uh, uh, fight to finish, uh, all those things, uh, finishing blocks, getting pancakes, like all those different things uh, as ever lived. So good play, right? um, and then um, I'll probably say um, just taking responsibility for when things go wrong. Like I mean, I think last year there was a lot of uh, point like, well, this this happened, I need this or whatever. Instead of now, it's just like they mess up, they accept it, take responsibility of it, and then uh, you know, therefore giving them the power to change it. So I think that's something that uh, they matured in that way as well. Do you feel them? Controlling things. I mean, you've, you've played behind a really good offensive line here in the past, and I know last year might have been a little bit of a struggle for those guys. But now, do you feel this offensive line kind of imposing its will and controlling things up front? Yeah, I mean, I was feeling that way for some time now. Those guys, you know, well off the ball and uh, just establish a new line of scrimmage, you know, driving deep into linemen into the linebackers, those type of things. That's what happened. Now. This year. What does it what does it do for a team for an offense when you are running the ball like you guys have the last two weeks especially? I mean, uh, over 300 yards each time. But what, what just from a confidence standpoint, what how does it translate into the confidence of the offense as a whole? I mean, that's I feel like the point of who we are. Very um, obviously, we're one first type of team. We established one because offense is not rolling off the ball, and um, I think just. The clicking as far as what we're trying to do. Yeah, but coming out of that Iowa game, it, it, it seemed like obviously that was a, a focal point for you guys was to get that going, correct? Why was it? Why do you think it was missing before? Like it, it wasn't missing. We yeah. just we didn't, that game. So the things we were doing before, like so zone read is what we do. It's kind of who we are. Yeah. Uh, the equate numbers, right? But a defense could kind of put up, kind of, they could dictate who runs the ball. So with that being said, when we play Iowa, they were squeezing down on the back and making me carry the ball instead yeah. of having tailback runs and they don't want me to carry the ball a lot. So that, therefore, we didn't do that. And then two, we got behind early and going on the ball and we like that. So that's why we had happened. So that was the situation that happened. JT, being from, oh, sorry to mean interrupt, coming from Texas and then coming here, when do you think you first understood the magnitude of this rivalry and was there a moment where you kind of realized what, what this game meant to not only the team but to the fan base and, and just... Yeah. It was really kind of odd. I remember coming to uh, April 18th uh, and I remember it was like a week later, there was uh, a guy that to the team in the north, and he had a Ohio State lawyer, and he burned it. And it was like, and immediately, I don't know, I saw like this hate, this deep hatred, just kind of flared up inside me. I was like, well, why would you do that? Like, you know what I'm saying? I got letters from the team, I didn't burn them. You know what I'm saying? That's kind of whack, but I don't know. I think it happened really quickly as far as like the hatred. When you first came here and they teach you all about the rivalry, what do you remember from that first <laughs> class and kind of the history behind it? Yeah, um, I mean, I think, I'm trying to think, it was uh, during camp, uh, we had some former players come in. We talked about um, gold pants. Um, we talked about um, the tradition of riding up there on the bus. Uh, and then, I not say the M word. I mean, there's a lot of things that stood out. Uh, I think one of the great things was you know, the gold pants that kind of came and hit me at first. Uh, just understand that uh, at that time we were getting beat by them and they put their pants on one at a time just like we do. And then the gold pants do you have four pair already, right? Yeah. Uh, what would it be like to have five pair? That would be really cool. That means we won. No, no, that was an obvious question. <laughs> what do you see in that defense? If they were to give a scouting report? Yeah, so 
uh, it's kind of a multiple defense. They change up the front um, and uh, play hard. Uh, like, I think as far as coverage, they get a, um, I wouldn't say they're simple, but they know who they are as far as their defense and they uh, you know, know where everybody's at and uh, play well together. And uh, their effort is always there each and every play. If not one of those guys where you don't see guys running to the ball or anything like that. Like, you know, there's a good four player I think you know, a lot of times we don't keep the same type of guys and uh, look at the, the players. GT, we always hear about how physical this game is. How important is it for the line to get the push and to get the running game established in this kind of game? Yeah, um, yeah it's definitely uh, a physical uh, game and there's a lot of motion behind it. Um, with that, I think getting those guys going early, uh, coming off the ball, I think it's going to be uh, critical for us and not have uh, them on our heels in kind of third and long situations, second and long situations, kind of making sure that we manage everything, especially early in the game. Uh, yeah, that's a way as well. Hey, JT, hey, when you first got here, well, when Urban first got here, you were the first quarterback they recruited. And in the time since, a lot of things have happened mm -hmm. um, for this program for the better. And you were one of the pillars or one of the things that they built this program around. And at Michigan right now, they haven't really identified a quarterback. And I think that that's kind of been a little bit tough for them in terms of the development of the upper trajectory of that program. I was wondering, how do you view yourself? How do you view your recruitment and being the first quarterback that they signed here? And your role in helping build something here that has now seemingly built to last? Um, yeah, I don't know. I really didn't think about it really. Uh, I mean, I think the reason why I came here is that we're a blue collar type of program that goes to work every day. Uh, you know, everybody does the same amount of work. Um, with that, it's a constant, uh, I guess, fight to develop and get better and I think that's what we uh, you know, who we are at of course is, you know being hard workers the best players being the best workers and grinders and so I was where I came um, and then I you know I when I first got here I just watched the old guys um, do that I watched Jack Newhart I watched Corey Lindsay I watched Braxton uh, Kenny G I watched those guys and saw how they were, Jeff Herman. Like, so with that, I was able to see what it looked like and then just learn from there. But I mean, Coach Garfield, my high school coach, that's who we were as well. So I just fit the mode as far as you know, being a hard worker. Like, that's who we want here. And so I just watched the guys and then tried to follow suit. I know that you're.